what if the Mets and Correa completed their deal? Todd, would the Mets be set up better or worse moving forward if they had Correa? I mean, I think the obvious answer, they'd be set up better because the guy would have been playing third. That was a revolving door uh, this year. I think there's still a lot of questions as to where that is going, um, you know, after 2023. So, yeah, would they have been better off? Yes. But I would have heard a lot of complaining this year by one you're, you, for one, uh, if, no. if Correa puts up the kind of year that he did, um, you know, quite honestly, in Minnesota and was doing it for the New York Mets with three hundred million dollar uh, contract we would have been hearing a lot of the same disgruntled sort of attitude about overpaying for a guy and extending a contract where a guy could potentially not have the health to live it out as well so would he have been better yes do I think it was still the right decision to let him go do what he did yes I think the Mets are in a better overall position now with the flexibility that they have at that position as opposed to looking at him in the playoffs where he's always good and saying boy wouldn't it have been cool if because it, you would it would require six months of amnesia to get to this point that we're at right now right. and I, I there is part of me that thinks the Mets are in a better position now because of the way their farm right. system is set up so I think what you're saying Todd is like of course you're going to say if you have Korea on your team that you're going to be a good team and you're going to be better for it but I kind of feel what the Mets did the trade deadline for the future sets them up for long-term success and to your point when you look at the regular season Sal that he yeah. had this year I mean it he wasn't stepping up the way he is in the postseason he's more been a bigger presence in that clubhouse in that dugout because when you're on the Mets, you have someone like Lindor. You don't necessarily need a Correa. So you're seeing Correa have a bigger impact also because of the team that he is on. So because what we're talking about with the Mets is he would go to third base and you're saying it'd be locked down, no questions asked for the future. But I don't really think when you look at what where the Mets underperformed, yes, they're looking for a third baseman. I don't necessarily think that that's, you know, he would change how this mm -hmm. team would have played this year, and that would have solved everything. He, I like that they're building up the farm system. His regular season would have been a disaster here. I agree with you, Sam. And they wouldn't have been in the postseason. You know what Correa would have been a perfect fit for? The 2022 Mets. Unfortunately, that was a move that could not happen. Him in the postseason was the whole reason why I wanted them, but we were anticipating the Mets were going to go to the postseason and him this year, oh my goodness, it would have been a disaster. And for that amount of contract and money, it, it, no. And by the it. way, this is the year his leg is still working. Right. Like, this is when right. it's got to be good because all and those physicals showed. Towards the end of showed, this year, there was an I.L. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And, and his, questions. According to many doctors, the health's only going downhill from, from here. So, yeah. I agree with you, Sal. One, one quick thing that we learned about this Correa stuff from the Mets, though, from the Mets standpoint. We learned uh, that we can expect anything and to never be surprised because this, this signing him was a deviation from their plan. When Steve Cohen and Billy Epler and the organization was saying, we're not going to pursue Carlos Correa, they, don't, they want to avoid long-term deals, they meant it. But then a call from Scott Boris, a martini, and a lot of money, and all of a sudden Carlos Correa is going to be a Met. And what that showed me as someone who's going to cover this team is don't speak too definitively on this show or, you know, in my, in my columns or anything because something can be true in a moment, but Steve Cohen is a disruptor. On, on a Wednesday, they weren't trading Justin Verlander. On a Sunday, Justin Verlander was a Astro. In some organizations, this would mean they were lying to you on Wednesday. With the Mets, it means... It changed. And, and that's what that's what I have learned about these guys under Cohen. And that is why I love King Cohen. You never know. 